Hello, students and grown-ups. Did you like learning about organic and geometric shapes? Were you able to tell the difference between both kinds of shapes? Today, we're gonna to try to draw a picture using just two shapes, one geometric shape and one organic shape. Now you can make anything you want, but I'm gonna show you what I'm thinking of making if you need an idea, okay? For today's activity, you're going to need paper. Any kind of paper is fine. Uh, something to draw with and something to color with. And I'm going to draw with my um, black marker because I think it's easier for you to see on the video. But I think that uh, friends should be drawing with a pencil because if you make a mistake, then you can erase it. Um, but if you draw with a marker, then you just have to work through your mistakes because you won't be able to erase them. So if you really want to, um, if you're fine with working through your mistakes, then if you want to use a marker, but a pencil is probably your best bet. Now, there are so many different kinds of um, organic and geometric shapes to think of, but I just decided to just get us started about with thinking about these shapes to just use these two and so um, what do you think of these two shapes we have a round circle shape and then kind of a poofy shape and I'm wondering if you have any ideas for using these two shapes um, I have an idea in my head and I think it's a really good one because it is wintry and it's winter right now. So it could be kind of a fun idea. Um, and one other quick thing, uh, you know, if you're drawing this circle, which is a geometric shape, I just drew mine with my marker and that's fine. But, you know, I know that some friends like to maybe trace, maybe they have something that is a circle shape at home. Uh, or wherever they're doing their learning and they want to use that to trace so you could do that too but you don't have to okay so let's start drawing uh, before you start your drawing you're gonna need to decide do you want your paper to be you know the tall vertical way or the horizontal way and since you can draw anything you want you can decide um, and I'm just showing my idea so um, you don't have to do the same thing I'm doing, but you can if you want, especially maybe if you want for your first drawing to do what I'm doing and then maybe you'll try another one and you'll use a different geometric shape and a different organic shape and that's how you'll really practice incorporating them into your art and I think that'd be a wonderful idea. Okay, so I told you I already had an idea and uh, it's gonna be, can you tell? It's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be a snowman or a snow person um, with my three geometric shapes. And I'm gonna add a ground line in right here. And then um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start drawing in the details of the snowman, snow person. And remember, you do not have to do this, but you can if you want. And oh, I should put some buttons and some stick arms, but I think it's cute when people draw the stick arms with like some mittens on the end. So I'm going to do that. And then I can color this in when I go to color. Um, so that's a good one for my geometric shapes. But now I need to add in my organic shape. We had that poofy shape, and I already, when I saw that shape, I knew I wanted to use it because it looks like clouds. And have you ever seen a really beautiful blue sky with those perfect white puffy clouds? I just, I love that. So that's what I was thinking of, and that's not too challenging of you know, a picture. And I can even, I can add more things, and if I want, maybe I can draw a far away snowman and how about some trees it's kind of a weird tree but 
<laughs> I'm gonna just go with this. Um, a tree. With a little baby tree in it. Well, now I like that better. Okay, so, you know, when you're doing a drawing, you wanna really work on filling your whole page, fill the paper, and add in a lot of details to make it interesting. Um, one detail that I always think is kind of fun is to just put some, I don't know, you could even put like footprints or something in the snow. Like walking away or uh, some, some lines to show that maybe it's a windy day. But adding in those details can really make your artwork look more interesting. And then of course, color it. While I was coloring, I started to think, oh, sometimes when we're drawing like a wintry picture, we think, oh, I don't really have to, there's nothing to color, it's snow. But sometimes in your picture it doesn't look very finished. One of the things that I've been encouraging the kids to do is use the side of their, like if you have a broken peeled crayon with like a wintry blue or purple color, um, by just rubbing it along the edge of your lines, or maybe just a little you know, wisps of color here, put the, it just like gives it a fun wintry touch and it does make it look like a little bit more finished so I love that idea and also um, we've been talking about like to, now I need to color in my sky and that's a lot of coloring and sometimes you know your hands will get so tired to do all that coloring but you want it to be finished so you can you know also do that kind of you know, I like to just do that little kind of a bit of a crayon rubbing to get those big spaces filled. And then I can maybe lightly color, color over it um, a little bit more. But you gotta be careful because you don't wanna do that blue crayon rubbing, you know, over your clouds. Those beautiful clouds should be white and fluffy not colored so try to be careful going around the spaces maybe if it is a tricky space you can just you know do some traditional you know neat coloring to get those little tiny spaces colored in um, and then you can go back and do the bigger spaces but you just want to make sure it all like kind of goes together and I used to not like it when the kids did this and I thought, no, I don't like that. But now I'm thinking, hmm, sometimes I want to finish my picture, but that's a lot of coloring. So now I'm feeling like maybe it is a good idea to use this little kind of a, a trick to get it colored in a little bit. What do you think? Do you think this is, looks good or not? What does your teacher think? Maybe your teacher doesn't like it. But that looks much better than not being colored in at all. And if it was going to take too long to color that in. Now I see, look, I can go over it now. And maybe just lightly color in over the whole thing. Just to make it a touch darker. And I think that looks wonderful. Like, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to say your teacher's probably going to be okay with it and can I also tell you something too um, these finished drawings are awesome and if you could email your teacher a picture of it they would love to see it and you know who else loves this kind of stuff your grown-ups you can say I made this for you and they would think that's so sweet of you and you can, and they can, maybe they'll hang it up somewhere, or maybe you just want to take your own picture and hang it up in your room because you're proud of how carefully you did your artwork. So I think 
that would be an awesome idea. And I hope you do hang it up somewhere or you give it to somebody else to hang up because this is really special. And it's a perfect picture for winter. And I hope you had fun making it. And I hope you had fun using geometric shapes and organic shapes in your work of art. And you filled your paper with your picture and then you colored it in neatly and made it look really finished. Oh, this would look good too. What if we just color in those footprints a little bit? Okay, now I'm done. And I think I did a good job. And I hope you do a good job too.